Welcome to FISM News. I'm Samuel Case. I'm Renata Kish. And tonight, Donald Trump narrowly survives an assassination attempt. Meanwhile, the Republican National Convention begins despite the shooting. And we explore the attack's implications on the November election. Well, we begin today's show with the shocking and devastating news from over the weekend. Donald Trump on Saturday narrowly survived an assassination attempt during a campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. A gunman fired at the former president, piercing the upper part of his ear when Secret Service then quickly surrounded Trump, who then momentarily resisted their efforts, defiantly pumping his fist in the air and mouthing the word fight before then being led away. Take a little what happened. One rally goer was tragically killed and another critically injured. The shooter himself was also later killed by the Secret Service. Saturday marks the first assassination attempt on an American president since Ronald Reagan back in 1981. Trump was reportedly in good spirits at the hospital. He later released a statement saying that night, quote, I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I immediately knew that something was wrong and that I heard a whizzing sound, shots, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. He said, God bless America. He then went on to also thank the Secret Service and extended his condolences to the families of the other victims. Meanwhile, about two hours after the incident, President Biden condemned the assassination attempt, saying there is no place in America for violence like this. Biden said this is one of the reasons why the country must be unified. Look. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. According to CBS News, the White House and a Trump advisor confirmed that the same night that President Biden spoke with Trump on the phone, but did not give any details. The President and First Lady Jill Biden also offered their condolences to the family that lost a father and a husband in the shooting while protecting his family. They also extended prayers for those who have been injured. Meanwhile, yesterday, Biden said that as the investigation goes on, Trump will receive extra security measures, including the Republican or at the Republican National Convention. As this investigation continues, here's what we're going to do. First, Mr. Trump, as a former president and nominee of the Republican Party, already receives a heightened level of security. And I've been consistent in my direction of the Secret Service to provide him with every resource, capability, and protective measure necessary to ensure his continued safety. Second, I've directed the head of the Secret Service to review all security measures for the all security measures for the Republican National Convention, which is scheduled to start tomorrow. And third, I've directed an independent review of the national security at yesterday's rally to assess exactly what happened. And we'll share the results of that independent review with the American people as well. Meanwhile, more information is emerging about the shooter. He's now been identified as Thomas Matthew Crooks. He's a 20-year-old from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, a town about an hour away from Trump's rally in Butler. Officials say he was armed with a semi-automatic rifle, which may have belonged to his father. We're not sure yet. Investigators also discovered what appeared to be explosive materials in his car, though forensic results have yet to officially confirm that that is, in fact, the case. Now, as far as his motive goes, that is also still not clear. Records show he was a registered Republican on the one hand, but on the other, he also made a donation to the liberal to a liberal PAC the uh, day the President Biden was inaugurated back in 2021. The FBI says his social media contained no threatening language, nor did he have a history of mental health issues either. They also say he acted alone in the shooting. 
Meanwhile, the Secret Service is facing intense scrutiny following the attempted assassination of former President Trump. Both elected officials and members of the public are questioning how the nation's most elite security service missed the would-be assassin climbing onto a building about 150 yards away from the former president. In a statement, the Secret Service admitted that the gunman was able to fire multiple shots before being killed by law enforcement snipers. However, they said they're still investigating the situation. Criticism of the agency only increased after it was revealed that other rally-goers saw the gunman on the roof and notified law enforcement in addition to taking video. Um, we're pointing at them. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police are like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. He, you know, he's, he's crawling. And... Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two, three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle is now facing calls to resign after Saturday's incident. Critics have accused Cheadle of focusing on diversity hiring above safety. At the time of her hiring by President Biden in 2022, it was reported that her top goal was to have at least 30 percent of the Secret Service agents be female by 2030. And finally, a small glimmer of goodness coming out of the weekend's horrific events. A GoFundMe approved by Donald Trump for the shooting victims and their families has already raised nearly $4 million. The goal was originally around $1 million, and as of this morning, it stood at more than $3.7 million. According to the crowdfunding page, all donations will go to, quote, these proud Americans as they grieve and recover. Meanwhile, firefighter Corey Campatori, who lost his life at the rally, he's being hailed as a hero for shielding his wife and daughter when the gunfire first began. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro has now ordered flags to be flown at half staff in his honor. Corey was a girl dad. Corey was a firefighter. Corey went to church every Sunday. Corey loved his community. Most especially, Corey loved his family. I asked Corey's wife if it would be okay for me to share that we spoke. She said yes. She also asked that I share with all of you that Corey died a hero. That Corey dove on his family to protect them last night at this rally. Corey was the very best of us. May his memory be a blessing. We'd like to echo the words of Governor Shapiro there. It is really such a tragedy, and we, of course, will be praying for the uh, families of all the victims there. It is truly devastating. All right, and up next, Republicans do press ahead with their convention in spite of the attack on President Trump over the weekend. We'll get the details on that and more after this short break. Stay tuned after this. FISM News is a conservative news outlet bringing you the latest updates from a biblical worldview. With us, you get just the news grounded in truth. And now with the new FISM TV app, you can take FISM News with you wherever you go so you're never behind on what's happening. We update the app regularly with short clips you can watch at your convenience. So go ahead, visit the App Store and download the FISM TV app. Start exploring all of our content anytime, anywhere. There are moments in life that define us. Choices determine the courses we take. Choices that create life. Or those that save a life. And some make life worthwhile. There are decisions to stay or to go. To remain the same or to grow. Sometimes we pray and make peace. Other times we take a stand for what we believe. In celebration, mourning, triumph, and defeat, we are invested in every decision we seek. Despite differences, we have one thing in common, the desire to do all for the glory of God. Keep your wallet aligned with your heart and your investments in harmony with your faith. Timothy Plan, biblically responsible mutual funds, ETFs, and retirement plans. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at timothyplan.com. 
Read carefully before investing. And welcome back to FISM News. I'm Renata Kish. Well, let's jump into the other news as well. And despite all the commotion, the Republican National Convention is still scheduled to proceed as planned. Republican leaders from across the country flew into Milwaukee this morning, including President Trump, who arrived less than 48 hours after the attempt on his life. The former president posted on Truth Social that he had initially considered delaying his trip to Milwaukee until tomorrow. However, he decided that he did not want to allow a shooter or potential assassin to force change uh, to scheduling or anything else. Trump made good on his promise by announcing his vice presidential pick, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. Trump said on True Social, quote, after lengthy deliberation and thought and considering the tremendous talents of many others, I have decided that the person best suited to assume the position of vice president of the United States is Senator J.D. Vance of the great state of Ohio. A very bold pick by the former president. We'll be breaking down Senator Vance's record and his background during tomorrow's show. you want to tune in for that. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, he says he has rewritten his acceptance speech for the Republican National Convention after the weekend shooting. He now tells the Washington Examiner he rewrote his speech to focus on unity rather than specifically attacking President Biden. He said, quote, this is a chance to bring the whole country, even the whole world together. The speech will be a lot different, a lot different than it would have been two days ago. Speakers at the convention were also told by officials to, quote, dial it down, to dial down their speeches, speeches uh, following the attempted assassination against the former president. When asked about the significance of Thursday's speech, Trump said it is a chance to bring the country together. I was given that chance. This comes as a source close to Trump says the near-death experience has greatly affected him, saying he thinks he was handed a gift from God. He just can't believe it. And you know, Renata, watching the clip of mm -hmm. Trump being shot, it's hard right. to say, to deny that God's hand was there because mm -hmm. if you watch it, he just turns his head at the right moment. If right. he had kept his head looking ahead, mm -hmm. I don't think he'd be here anymore. And that's really a blessing to the yeah. country. It would be just devastating if we lost him. Yeah, it was definitely an act of God for sure. And and I just hope that maybe Trump has a, a, a come to Christ moment, yeah, maybe, yeah. potentially. It's truly incredible. Yeah, mm -hmm. Well, meanwhile, House Speaker Mike Johnson said Congress will launch a full investigation of the attempted assassination. I've already announced that Congress will do a full investigation of the tragedy yesterday to determine where there were lapses in security and anything else that the American people need to know and deserve to know. But in the meantime, uh, we've got to turn the rhetoric down. We've got to turn the temperature down in this country. We need leaders of all parties on both sides to call that out. Chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Republican Representative James Comer, has requested Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle to testify before Congress on July 22nd. Meanwhile, Republican Senator Josh Hawley also wrote a letter to Democratic Senator Gary Peters, who is also the chairman of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, demanding a probe into the attack. Here's Speaker Mike Johnson saying what Congress will be expecting from these investigations. I asked Secretary Mayorkas last night, my first question is, were, was drone, were drones being used in the vicinity? I mean, that would be an obvious thing. You would be able to spot someone on a roof. Um, he didn't know when I asked him that question last night. Um, and that doesn't mean it didn't happen, but he didn't know last night. Um, uh, we need to know, how could uh, an individual be at that elevation that was seen by apparently bystanders on the ground? Yeah. How could not that not be noticed by, uh, by Secret Service? I, lots more questions than answers this morning. Meanwhile, as Trump is calling for unity, Republicans are also urging Democrats and media outlets to cool down the rhetoric. You, hold, you heard uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson just a second ago talking about that. He also appeared on CNN yesterday calling out the inflammatory language used to describe the former president. When, when my colleagues go out, Democrat colleagues, and say democracy will end, the republic will be in an emergency stage if, if Donald Trump wins for president, it's just not true. It's another election. And, and when they say that kind of rhetoric and they heat it up like that, there are people out there that take these things to heart and they act upon them. We're, politicians are not responsible for that. But we do have a responsibility uh, to be responsible. I mean, you know, we're not asking for much. Let's just dial the rhetoric down. Let's have a vigorous debate. That's what our country is built upon. But we have to see one another as fellow Americans and not enemies. 
Now, this comes as for years now. The media and Democrats have described Trump as a sort of Hitlerian figure. Here's just a small montage of what that looked like. I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that. I mean, that is Mussolini Hitler like language. Trump's affinity for Hitler was always covered under an umbrella of his stupidity. Echoing Hitler's words. Listen to this. Well, Hitler was duly elected. That's right. Echoing the hateful rhetoric of Adolf Hitler. It echoes Hitler. And That's the kind of language Hitler used in Mein Kampf. God, vermin and, the, and Hitler and Mussolini. That's a horrifying clip. That's a fascist clip. He's just going full on Hitler. Just on Friday, Biden called Trump a threat to the nation after recently telling donors to, quote, put Trump in a bullseye. Of course, he didn't mean that in a violent way. He was referring to shifting the focus away from Biden's disastrous debate a few weeks ago. Biden's now trying to reverse himself following criticism, posting on X, quote, while we may disagree, we are not enemies. We are neighbors, friends, coworkers, citizens, and most importantly, we are fellow Americans. But it looks like it didn't take long for mainstream media to recover from the shock before they started implying that the shooting was not just the fault of the liberal narrative. Here's ABC's George Stephanopoulos and Martha Raditz, Raditz excuse me, saying that Trump supporters contributed to the attack as well. We were just looking back this morning at some of the things that uh, former President Trump has said. He warned last March of potential death and destruction if he were charged by the Manhattan District Attorney. Our country is being destroyed, as they tell us, to be peaceful. And, of course, in March, he said, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That will be the least of it. He said he was partly joking and that that was taken out of context. However, Democrat Senator Chris Coons said that the country must tone down the violent rhetoric. We have to reduce the rhetoric and the tone. I'd urge folks to uh, turn off their phones and get off of social media today and take some time with your family uh, and reflect on who we are as a nation and who we want to be. But according to Democrat Representative Jason Crow, the Democratic Party's leadership has done nothing to encourage its members to tone down the rhetoric that usually refers to Trump as an existential threat to America. And up next, we'll take a look at the political fallout from the attempted assassination. But first, let's go to a moment in history. Welcome back to Moment in History. I'm Seth Yudinsky. Well, the third decade of the 20th century was a time of fast living, innovation, and kind of having themes of exceptionalism across America in the wake of the victory of the Great War. The decade would become known to us as the Roaring Twenties. Now, as great as it seemed to be, it all came to a grinding halt in 1929 when the stock market endured its most devastating crash in history, driving the country and the world, actually, into the Great Depression. In 1929, the stock market crashed, bringing millions of Americans into economic hardship. Now, to understand the significance of the fall of 1929, when Wall Street imploded and millions lost their assets, we have to understand the decade that preceded it, actually. The Roaring Twenties really lived up to that name in every way. While it was a time of prosperity, it was also something of an object lesson of hubris. Often happens in history when prosperity strikes. People tend to enjoy the good times and abundance without really looking ahead to the future sustenance of that abundance. This happened in the 20s when the market became really overinflated throughout the decade. In the wake of the victory in the Great War, as we mentioned earlier, there was heightened confidence, heightened financial growth, and heightened spending on Wall Street. The first warning signs in this actually began in the summer of 1929, where jobless numbers had steadily risen at the same time that many Americans were borrowing money in business ventures. Now, throughout September and October of 1929, Wall Street stocks began to reverse course, but the real drop came in mid-October. Then on October 24th, panic set in as millions of investors essentially made a run on Wall Street at the same time to get out whatever they could. That day, historians estimate that almost 13 million share transactions occurred. The following week, the bottom fell out and the markets plummeted. On October 29th, the day known in history as Black Tuesday, the linchpin moment in the dramatic crash came where roughly 16 million transactions were made. On that single day alone, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, one of the major indices in the market, dropped 12 percentage points. 
Now, many of the huge market movers such as General Electric and DuPont stocks imploded during the month of September into October as well. With chaos on Wall Street, the financial sector of American life was thrown into chaos and for the next decade, the United States was mired in the Great Depression. While the crash was not the only Kickstarter of this depression, many historians agree that it was the most important. And the truth is, it was really not until the beginning of World War II at the end of the 1930s that the Western world was able to slog out of the Great Depression. In America in particular, the international crisis of the war provided the cure that it needed to break out of the financial slump as millions of jobs, both at home and abroad, were created. Thanks so much for joining me once again for a moment in history. Are you new to biblically responsible investing? As Christians, we have the responsibility to be good stewards of the money God has entrusted us with. As we invest in the market, we want to make sure that the companies we invest in aren't taking money and using it to fund industries that grieve the heart of God, like pornography, abortion, gambling, or the LGBT agenda. That doesn't mean a company must be a Christian company to be biblically responsible. It means that company is solely focused on excellence in its industry and doesn't support things that God hates. To learn more about biblically responsible investing and how you can put it to practice in your portfolio, go to financialissues.org. The mission of Financial Issues is to expose Jesus for all He is, all He means, and all that He can do. On the day I found I was pregnant, I was full of emotions and I just was so overwhelmed and I don't know if I'm ready for this huge life altering, changing commitment. I had individuals around me not wanting me to have this child. And somehow, and I was driving and I saw the Women's Help Center sign and I immediately turned in. That just took relief off of me and I was like, you know what? It's gonna be okay. They gave me the confidence and the support that I needed to be able to go out and face the world. First time I held Finnegan, I just lit up with joy. I was so excited. This little boy that I had in my life, he is loving and generous. Watching him just grow and flourish into this incredible human being has just been so rewarding and so uplifting. Looking back, I don't know what I would do without him because I needed him more than I think he needed me. And welcome back to FISM News. I'm Samuel Case. For this final segment, we're going to look at the ongoing political fallout from the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. President Biden and many Democrats are taking down ads and pausing fundraisers as they assess how to message going forward. Immediately following the shooting, the Biden campaign sent out a memo to its staffers urging them to refrain from issuing any comments on social media or in public. That same memo also said to pause any proactive campaign communication across all platforms and in all circumstances until we know more. Meanwhile, Republicans are pushing ahead with full force. The Trump campaign sent out a new fundraising appeal yesterday showing a picture of Trump raising his fist after being shot, along with the words, quote, I am Donald J. Trump and I will never surrender. At the same time, the Democratic Party is likewise pausing their search for a new candidate, at least for now. Dejected supporters are seeing the writing on the wall. One Biden ally said the race is basically over because the party has lost momentum. Another Biden supporter said it would look bad if another person tried calling for the president to step aside in the midst of all this chaos. A longtime Democrat strategist said that while Biden has been trying to calm supporters about his lackluster candidacy, the attempted assassination threw a wrench in his campaign. The person said that telling an old man in his words it's time to go is hard enough by itself, let alone after an event like this. Another supporter said, quote, it's likely the effort to dislodge Biden has ended. 
Meanwhile, taking a look at the Republicans who believe, despite the attack being absolutely horrific, they do believe that Trump uh, will actually see a boon for his campaign in the fallout. Representative Derek Van Orden of Wisconsin tells Politico he believes Trump, quote, just won the election with Tim Burchett of Tennessee, also saying this will energize the base more than anything. Already, Trump is seeing a bump in support immediately after the shooting. Billionaire Elon Musk said he fully endorses President President Trump and also wished him a rapid recovery. This comes as Trump's victories continue to mount both politically as well as legally. As earlier this morning, the judge overseeing Trump's classified documents case threw the case out entirely, saying special counsel Jack Smith was improperly appointed. This is a major victory for the former president, as many conservative legal scholars point out that out of all the cases against Trump, this one likely had the most merit. Trump celebrated the ruling on Truth Social, calling for all his cases to be dismissed. Meanwhile, political violence in the U.S. has shocked the world as well, and leaders have been quick to condemn the assassination attempt. One of 30 statements have, been poured, have poured in from world leaders, many describing the act as appalling, sickening, or despicable. British Prime Minister Keir Starmer and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that such violence is a threat to democracy. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney called it a limit that should never be crossed. Meanwhile, Russia, on the other hand, blamed the Biden administration for creating a political atmosphere that encouraged the shooting. However, Putin did not contact Trump following the incident. Meanwhile, Chinese President Xi Jinping allegedly expressed sympathy for the former president as well. And in contrast, former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, a man who survived a stabbing during his own presidential campaign, told Trump, quote, see you at the inauguration. Bolsonaro is a very uh, Trumpian figure, so that kind of fits. Uh, meanwhile, it's not just world leaders, but Christian and faith leaders are also flooding social media with calls to prayer following the weekend's events. Oh, excuse us there. Uh, evangelical leader Franklin Graham, he posted this, quote, I thank God that former President Donald Trump is alive, while also saying he is praying for the victims as well as their families. Meanwhile, focus on the family president, Jim Dolly. He expressed gratitude that Trump was not seriously injured. He also asked Christians to, quote, call on our mighty and merciful God to comfort all those affected. At the same at the same time, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary President Al Mohler, he's calling for prayers for the entire country. He says this kind of attack is an attack upon our entire political system. Finally, this is just a couple, but our final one for this list is uh, Texas-based Pastor Jack Graham. He urged for greater unity following the attack. He said, at a time like this, we are not Democrats or Republicans. We are Americans praying against the evil works of darkness. And we, of course, at FISM News would like to join all those pastors uh, in those prayers. We really do need to be praying for our country at this time. Amen. Well, that's our program for today. Thank you so much for joining us. And please visit FISMnews.tv for more content. That's right. Plenty going on in the world these days. For any updates until our next show, you can follow us on social media or download the FISM app. Thanks so much. God bless. And we'll catch you tomorrow night with more news coverage. See you then.